The US Food and Drug Administration has designated an LSD formulation as a breakthrough therapy for anxiety disorders. This was after a study which was published by researchers in New York this week found that a single large dose of LSD can have lasting effects when it comes to treating generalized anxiety disorder and for some of the participants it actually put them into remission no longer suffering from an anxiety disorder even three months after the dose had taken place. People that suffer from an anxiety disorder have excessive worries around general things that stop them sort of living their day to day life. People who suffer from an anxiety disorder are often treated with antidepressants, uh, often from the SSRI family, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The only problem is that these drugs, they're a bit shit to be quite honest with you. About half the people don't respond at all to them. Um, and you know, uh, out of the people that do uh, actually get any effects from the SSRIs, they often get um, a range of side effects, including sexual side effects, low uh, sex drive, or if they do have a sex drive, they're unable to come. Others report feeling completely emotionally numb. Um, and just sort of like very flat, no emotions. Um, so yeah, pretty serious side effects for some people, although uh, they are obviously useful for some people as well. Um, but you wouldn't describe it as a very uh, effective treatment or a very good treatment. There's also a problem with what they call uh, the therapeutic window, which means when you start taking SSRIs, it's gonna take about two weeks uh, for you to, if you are one of the lucky people who do have effects, it's gonna take about two weeks for you to um, feel anything. A lot of people just give up in that two weeks and they just stop taking them. You also can't mix them with, with certain drugs because of the effects that they have on the uh, serotonin system in your brain. You couldn't mix it with ecstasy, for instance. So if you took ecstasy and SSRIs at the same time, then you would get too much of a buildup of serotonin in your body um, and that could result in serotonin syndrome, which is very dangerous. And some studies have shown that the SSRIs, even for the people that work, are barely better than a placebo. Um, so all in all, a bit of a shit uh, treatment, really, to be honest with you. But we do have a suggestion for quite a while now that psychedelics could potentially be used to treat anxiety disorders. Because of the war on drugs, psychedelics are more often used as recreational drugs. They have mind altering, hallucinogenic, um, and psychedelic effects that many people enjoy, or many people say that they get certain personal development from. So the way that they reckon that LSD works in the brain is by increasing levels of the chemical, the neurotransmitter serotonin, which some people say induces a profound emotional experience. There have also been studies to suggest that LSD can enhance the brain's ability to rewire itself and form new thought patterns, which is a, a process also known as neuron plasticity. And this sort of neuron plasticity is a particularly interesting sort of thing when you think about things like addiction or anxiety disorders or OCD, because so your brain trains itself to be a certain way and your neurons grow in certain pathways that result in you sort of behaving in a certain way or feeling a certain way. So, you know, when you can see if there's a drug that can reset these pathways and you can sort of start again and try again, that's quite interesting. So researchers thought, well, maybe this could be used to treat anxiety. Ours is the first modern trial to look specifically at LSD or indeed any other psychedelic for generalized anxiety disorder. That's what the researcher Dan Carlin, who works for the biotech company MindMed in New York, they're the people who carried out this study. Up until this point, no trial comparing people taking LSD with others taking placebo pills has explored whether the substance can affect or benefit those with generalized anxiety disorder. To fill in the gap, Carlin and his colleagues recruited 198 adults who have the condition. The participants were slowly tapering off any anxiety medication that they had previously been using because it would be dangerous to use LSD in conjunction with them drugs. Um, but those who were receiving psychotherapy 
continued with their sessions. Researchers want to know someone's level of anxiety. What they do is um, they have a particular anxiety scale that they use um, to assess someone's anxiety, whether it's mild, moderate, or severe. The participants are asked to rate the severity of 14 symptoms of anxiety. Uh, for instance, feeling worried, feeling tense, or struggling to focus, so on and so forth. They're asked to rate this on a scale of zero to four. Out of a maximum total score of 56, the participants scored on average 30, which is above the threshold of 24 that would be classed as severe anxiety. So these participants did suffer on average from severe anxiety. So next, the team randomly split the participants into five groups that either took the LSD at various doses of 25, uh, micrograms or 50 or 100 or 200 micrograms or they were given the placebo pills they weren't told which they were given um, and a day later those who'd received the 100 to 200 microgram doses but not the other groups already reported an improvement in their symptoms a month later the participants who had received a 100 microgram dose experienced an average of 21 point reduction in anxiety on the scale the people who had received the 200 microgram dose experienced an average of 19 point reduction in anxiety. And the improvement sustained until the end of the study, which was three months after the dosing day. Out of these participants who'd had either the 100 microgram dose or the 200 microgram dose, 46% of them actually went into remission. It wouldn't be classed as having general anxiety disorder anymore. Meanwhile, those taking the placebo dose, so no not micrograms, or the two lower doses, which was 25 micrograms or 50 micrograms, uh, they saw between a 14 and 17 point reduction in anxiety over the same period, with about 20% of them going into remission. This suggests that the lower dose provided had no additional effects beyond the placebo. So that's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting that the people that received the placebo as well also had um, an improvement in their symptoms despite the fact that they didn't take any LSD at all. The researchers said this could be due to a range of different factors, including um, people feeling looked after and cared for as part of the study. The researchers said that the participants knew if they were taking LSD or not. They accurately guessed even though they weren't told uh, and they said that was down to the hallucinogenic side effects um, of the drug. What was interesting though is that the people on the placebo or the low doses also experienced uh, hallucinations, uh, some of them, like for instance distortions in perception, at much lower rates of the people that had had the higher doses, but still they did too. So that's a really interesting phenomenon and it really shows you the power of the brain. People were tripping out off literally nothing, but at much lower rate. So were a lot of these LSD related effects due to someone's expectations of taking the LSD or what they wanted from the LSD rather than the LSD actually causing these changes in the brain? Despite this, the researchers claim that this study provides some of the best evidence to date that LSD could be a useful treatment for anxiety. They concluded by saying it's a very promising finding that you can get a very rapid effect in symptom reduction that would be extremely meaningful to patients. The results are promising enough that the US Food and Drug Administration has designated MindMeds LSD formulation as a breakthrough therapy, which expedites the process for drug development. The researchers are now carrying out larger trials that will track benefits beyond three months and the results are expected in the next couple of years. So it does beg the question, obviously, if we've got something that seems to potentially be more effective than the SSRIs, which is the most common treatment, which isn't a very good treatment at all, why is it not more prevalent? Well, that is obviously because of the war on drugs and psychedelics were banned. The reason they were banned, not to protect people's health, as they said, they were banned in the 1960s because they were making people, a lot of young people, counterculture, um, people think differently about the big issues of the day. That was obviously terrifying to the establishment, so they had to stamp it out. Um, and it was, and it's obviously being used uh, as the war on drugs uh, has been used now 
over the last 50 years in order to discriminate and sort of marginalize and socially exclude certain societal subsets. But it does seem with stuff like this that the scientists are trying to sort of pull back and be like, you know, this is a really useful potentially medicine that can really benefit society. So let's hope that a lot more of these studies take place in the near future. Thanks for watching this video. If you're new here, feel free to like and subscribe if you wanna get more drug culture videos. Maybe you'll like this one about the difference between MDMA in the 1990s and now.